All right, Lindsay. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Where are you in New York? I forget. I'm in Brooklyn. You're in Brooklyn, and you're safe. You're healthy. You're Corona free. All is well. I've been <laughs> quarantined for about I don't know thirty days or so at this point. So you know, as a person who loves to travel, this is unusual for me. But I'm kind of just leaning into it, trying to um, embrace the moving the slowly, <laughs> and yeah. So it's been a, quite a change of pace. I, I I just have to say the wallpaper behind you wallpaper Thank you. is so fabulous. It is fantastic. Thank you. I I've tried to bring a little bit of the tropics into my homes. <laughs> so, a very good so, job. You know, this is my office, so I feel uh, you know a little bit of the outside while I'm inside. Yes. What was the last trip you went on? I was in St. Barts right before all of the travel restrictions hit. So okay. I came came home sort of, you know, right around the time when people started having a quarantine. It was a little bit crazy. We were some of the last flights out and um, it was scary, but also I was just very relieved that we were able to get home safely. The airlines were incredible. Um, and yeah, I've been home ever since then. That was in middle, the middle of March. Well, why don't you tell our live audience, who you are and what you do and what you write about and everything like that. Sure. So, hi, guys. Uh, for everyone new to the live, for who's joining, you may or may probably don't know me. <laughs> my name is Lindsay but you, Silverman. You, everybody should. Yeah, thanks. Uh, my name is Lindsay Silverman. I am a lifestyle blogger. I focus a lot on travel and beauty. And prior to launching my blog and focusing a lot on my Instagram, like Abe, I was um, a journalist. I was in the media business as a writer and editor for 10 years. And I, within the last two years, made a pivot to launch my own brand and build my own website um, and social platforms. So that is what I've been doing since October of 2018. And it's been going great. And I've now sort of become you know, a quote unquote expert in the social media field and the influencer uh, marketing space. So I love doing things like this to sort of shed, shed some light on the industry and kind of talk about what it is like being um, on this side. And also just, I like to um, kind of debunk the rumors and, you know, preconceived notions about that a lot of people have about influencers and content creators. Well, I think there's w the, the big thing I want you to talk about or debunk is a lot of chatter out there about how this is the end of influencers and, you know, we're moving into a, a very different uh, society, culture, whatever, and the, and it's not going to be the same that propelled the, you know, the, the influencers to become, you know, lifestyle trendsetters. Like, what are you seeing? Where do you see the business going? Yeah, so it's funny. I just saw someone post something that said everyone is just really keen to come up with ways to to end influencers <laughs> uh, so it's just like any excuse to um, get rid of this industry but i will say that you know not not all influencers are created equal it's not a one-size-fits-all situation yes there are a lot of people who um the content I would say is a little bit more surface level. It's not very in depth. They're not necessarily connecting on a deeper level with their audiences, but then there are a lot of other people that are doing incredibly well. Their websites are bringing in an incredible amount of traffic. Um, people are really connecting with their audiences. They're doing amazing things. They are building, you know, massive businesses and being super smart and strategic about it. You know, there are women, and men I followed who've launched their own brands and been able to spend virtually zero dollars on marketing and build multi-million dollar brands just based on leveraging their own social platforms and their um, other social connections. So, you know, I would say that, like, I think that the shift, there will be a shift for sure. I think people are looking to have a more deep personal connection with the people that they follow. And I don't, I think that the tolerance for BS, quite frankly, um, is, you know, people, people are just not interested in surface level discussion. They want real people and they want to really emotionally connect with the people that they're following. Um, you know, there are a lot of influencers right now who are not acknowledging the situation that we're in. They're just continuing yeah. to go on with their lives and posting cute baby clothes and how fabulous their lives are and how miserable they are at home. And I think that 
people are just not going to be interested in that anymore. We're, we're just, it, the situation right now is too dire and serious for it not to be acknowledged. But what I've been finding with my audience is that people do love, you know, to, to look at my feed for lightness and positivity and inspiration and to laugh. You know, I think there are, there is a, a chance to build your community and, um, and make them laugh because, you know, you do have to keep people in positive spirits. And in a lot of ways, influencer accounts are, are an escape for a lot of our followers. How do you balance, how do you strike that balance right now of you should acknowledge what's going on, but also, and I find this even in what we're publishing on Forbes.com, people do want some counter program. They do want to laugh. They do want to be reminded that good yeah. times while they're not here right now, will come again. How do you balance yeah. that balance? So, you know, I've made a very conscious effort on my feed and on my stories to really focus. I do a lot of giving back. I've done all these big giveaways. I've sent out care packages to like 50 or 60 healthcare workers. And I sort of gotten my audience involved by having them nominate loved ones. Mm -hmm. And so in a way that is, that's my way of acknowledging the situation and using my platform to give back. But then also, you know, it doesn't, people don't want to be that 100% of the time. So then I use the other opportunities to sort of just post about what I'm doing, the things that are, you know, happening around the house, which is not much and very relatable to a lot of what, what everyone else is going through. Um, and yeah, I think, you know, it's just a matter of being sympathetic and understanding that people are going through this really transitional period right now. And if you can provide an escape and a little bit of inspiration, then I think you're doing a good job. Now you fall into the, tra uh, the travel end of influencers. What are you, what are you expecting in terms of when do you think you'll be able to get back out there and start posting some of, uh, some of that more inspirational content? You know, I've still been posting, I've been doing a little bit of a mix. So on my feed, I've been, posting some content from home, but I still have also been posting throwback photos of beautiful places because I do think that people want to see, uh, you know, a reminder of mm -hmm. what will be when we can go back to traveling normally. And a lot of people are asking me, when do you think we'll be able to travel again? And, you know, it's not really my position. I'm not in any position to say, I just keep reminding people like, you know, we need to just take it slow. We need to embrace this moment of, like taking a step back and a pause and the travel will always be there. We will get back to it eventually when it's safe. But for right now, everyone just needs to chill out because like, <laughs> you know, it's like, everyone so much is easier losing said their minds. About, I'm like, there's a lot worse things going on in the world right now than you, the fact that you can't go on your cruise. Like, yes, it's sad. Honeymoons are being canceled. Weddings are being canceled. It's horrible. But the most important thing is that we all stay home and get back out to traveling when it's safe. And like the government says that it's the right time what where what where, what is the top of your list for when we can actually travel again you know i'm i like can't i feel like my mindset is so not even in that place yet that i haven't even started to fantasize about it but um you know i would love honestly i would love to go back to italy and help support their economy and bring money back to tourism there and i just you know it's so horrible it's been going on there and a lot of other places Probably, I, you know, I'd really like to go back to the places that have been hit the hardest by the um, impact of, like, the lack of tourism. Yeah. Do you think, and you answered this a little bit, but I, I want to ask you to expand. What will, you know, will, there was, you know, there was that piece of anti-fear, this is the death of the, of, this is the death of the influencer, yeah. right? Which that yeah. piece got shared around the internet. Is that true? I had a lot I mean, of thoughts about that because... To be perfectly honest, you know, a lot of brands are now relying on people like me more than they ever have before because their budgets are getting cut. They don't have the ability to do these huge advertising campaigns right. and marketing campaigns and photo shoots and commercials. And, you know, a really cheap way to get your message out is to use people like me who do everything on our own. We shoot the photos, we model the photos. We yep produce, we direct, we edit, we post production, we, we disseminate it out to an audience. So for a lot of brands who have had budget cuts and, and physically can't put together the big shoots that they used to, influencer, influencers are an amazing tool. Um, and I've been finding that people are open minded more to the idea of it, because I think their backs are up against the wall in terms of traditional advertising. Now, obviously, you have a great deal of creative spark in what you do. 
what what's your advice? And this is coming um, this is coming from one of our questions in, in the feed. H how are you seeing creative? How do you how would you tell someone who is searching to find some kind of spark in their own life right now? Yeah. To be honest, I'm feeling more creative than ever. I think it's been an interesting challenge. You know, I we had we all had a wrench thrown into our situation of the way we traditionally create content. I, since I typically do travel, my photos are, are pretty much travel photos. So yeah. now when I'm in the house for 30 days and I can't travel, it's sort of been an interesting creative um, obstacle for me. And to be honest, what I've been doing is spending a lot of time on TikTok, um, which I <laughs> thought, uh, previously thought I was too old for. And I probably still You're not too old. old. We're for. about the same age. And but, I love TikTok too, so it's fine. Yeah. But what I've been doing is, you know, I'll, I'll search the hashtags um, photo shoot idea or photo shoot at home or photo tips. And you would not believe the level of creativity of some of these people. It is so inspiring to me. Actually, after we get off this live, I have a whole list of really cool ideas that I found that I saw people do on TikTok. And I kind of want to try to recreate them for myself. Like we have plants in the apartment. I saw these people using really beautiful portrait shots with plants and you know you would never know that they were just in their living room so I just think it's an interesting time and um, you know learning to create videos and doing all these things that in the past I, I was just running so fast that I never had time to learn or focus so I yeah that's been a really um, eye-opening part of this whole experience for me I'm trying to to make the most of it really and it's another one of our questions from the crowd here what um what are your favorite follows what accounts do you love on either insta or TikTok or um you know other than you of course who should yeah. uh, people follow for uh to you know some of that wonder lost or, or creative spark you know there's there's two guys i follow on TikTok who are photographers self-taught i think a year ago they had never even picked up a camera I'll, I'll have to like you'll have to post their names later i can't remember what their names are offhand but they um, taught themselves how to do photography. They started by just like approaching people on the street, asking if they could take their photo and they bring all these props and do all these like incredible shoots. I mean, they look all, all these photos look like they could be photos, uh, a magazine cover. And both of these guys said they've now well over a million followers. And they've all said that they learn photography through watching YouTube videos. And you certainly would never know that by looking at the pictures. So the, the, these two guys are amazing. Um, on Instagram, I love following the Skinny Confidential. She is, you know, yeah. to me, one of the most inspiring people from both a business sense and a creative sense. Um, yeah, she's one of my favorites. Uh, someone just asked, and someone just asked what degree you have. I think we have the same degree, right? Do we have yeah. a magazine journalism degree from Syracuse? Yeah, so I um, went to the Newhouse School at Syracuse University. I was a magazine journalism major. I um, believe that that major doesn't exist anymore. I think it's now I digital think, yeah, media. Yeah. But I, w I was a traditional journalism major, and I worked in magazines um, as a journalist for 10 years before pivoting to this. So in a lot of ways, so much of what I'm doing now is really what I learned in school and, and after school. Another question from the crowd. Do you think influencers get a bad rap for being too materialistic? Uh, yes, a thousand percent. And you know what? Rightfully so. I think there are a lot of people, maybe even the vast majority of people, um, don't necessarily contribute to the positive reputation of a lot of us. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very diplomatic way of saying it. But, you know, then there are a lot of us who work so hard. You know, I work 14 hour days. I'm even during this quarantine, I've been working more now than I ever have in my life because I see this as an opportunity to like build my brand and increase my traffic and learn strategy. I do a lot of SEO with my blog and, you know, possibly thinking about starting a podcast and creating more video content. So there are a lot of us who work really, really, really hard and um, are very thoughtful and strategic about the way we run our businesses. And then there are other people who are, uh, I would say, not that way. But, you know, like I said before, it's, this is not like any profession there. It's not a one size fits all that, you know, not all influencers are the same. And I think, you know, if you're a consumer, you just need to be a little bit discerning in who you choose to follow. Because if you're following someone and you feel they're too materialistic and they're making you feel bad about yourself or less than with what you have, then 
that's probably saying something about, you know, that person and your, your relationship with them. So just unfollow them. There's life is too short to be like, you know, feeling bad about yourself by the people that you're choosing to follow um, on social media. I'm waiting to see because we have someone feeding questions in from the in from the crowd. Yes. Um, where you know you talked a little bit about where you see yourself headed, podcast, video, anything else that either you know you and other influencers are liable to be pivoting toward in the future. Yeah, I think to be honest, a lot of the really smart influencers and content creators are pivoting toward product because that is a business um, that we can control and it's a little bit more, I would say lucrative in the long term. Um, most so of is, this, is this Lindsay branded merch? Is that what we're talking about or something? Maybe, else? maybe it's a product that I create, but I'm not necessarily the name of the, the face of the brand. It could okay. be something I envision. This is, you know, I think a lot of us, we've seen a lot of really smart people build beauty brands, build fashion brands, swimwear brands that have become multi-million dollar companies. And I think that it's sort of, it seems like at this point, the natural next step for a lot of people, because we rely, a lot of us who don't have products rely on either ad revenue for our websites, those of us who have blogs, we rely on sponsored content and um, we rely on affiliate income. And a lot of that, I don't know whether that will continue for five or 10 years. You know, I, I often ask myself in 10 years, do I see myself doing a sponsored ad with a brand? I, I don't know. So in my mind, I would like to have something that I own completely. I don't own my Instagram platform. You know, none of us own our platform on Instagram. We own our websites, which are nice, but to own right. a product too would be, um, I think the ultimate goal. What is your advice for anyone starting out, someone who wants to become an influencer? What advice would you give slash what would you, um, you know, what, what advice would you give young Lindsay starting out? Something like that. Yeah, I would say that um, you shouldn't even start out wanting to be an influencer. I think the most successful, <laughs> uh, the most successful people that I've found uh, have been the people that either sort of fell into it or were just doing it as a side hobby because they were really passionate about the subject matter and the topics that they were posting about. And then eventually they saw an opportunity to do it full time. That's sort of what happened to me. But um, I think setting out to want to become an influencer for me is like the first red flag. I really like the stories of people who had a full time job like I did and had, you know, were running an account on the side that they, for me, it was travel and beauty. I love just like sharing tips and posting about products and travel advice and things like that. And eventually it got to the point where I felt that I was juggling two full time jobs and my community grew and I started wanting to do more things and build my website bigger. So that's why I decided to leave my job. But I think, you know, having it as a side project and now is a greater time than any for people who are working from home or have been furloughed or um, are sort of transitioning to figure out what their next step is. Like now is the time to start the blog, to start the Instagram account, to start your Pinterest account or TikTok or whatever it is that you're passionate about because you know, you may not have that kind, this kind of time again, many of us. Um, and I think it's a really, you know, an op a great opportunity to start pursuing something you've been thinking about. It's actually probably a great note to end on, which is the sense that we have a lot of time and that is a great opportunity than ever to, yeah. um, you know, channel our creativity. Is there anything I didn't ask you that I should have? Anything that you want to end on? You know, I just, I want to sort of defend a lot of the people in my industry and just say that there are so many of us, like I mentioned, who work very hard. We're very strategic. We take this so seriously. I mean, my livelihood is based on my business. So, you know, I think before you, people jump to conclusions and write all influencers off as the same or superficial or, you know, people who just post pretty pictures and make money from it. I think that maybe you're just not following the right people and um, maybe you should be a little bit more curated and who you're choosing to follow because there are a lot of people who are super inspiring, both from a business sense and a creative sense. Um, and so, you know, don't write, don't write all influencers off. Well, Lindsay, thank you so much for joining us. Everyone should be following your account. It's thank one you. of my favorites. 
thank you for joining us uh, and everyone else stay healthy stay sane stay creative all right guys thanks so much bye, bye.